Hey, Ruben Lara here, and I am pumped about Clip Studio's new animation features. And today I'm going to give you a quick start on motion tweening, 2D camera, and working with audio on the timeline. So make sure you're on the latest version, which is at least 1.8.4, and let's get started. So here I have a quick little loop sequence of Marley the Rat running. I still haven't done his tail yet. But let's go ahead and uh, repurpose one of these clips, or a duplicate of this clip, and add a motion tween so we can uh, create a little jump here. I'm going to make one quick change to my timeline. I like to set thumbnail size to none. That's just a personal preference. I just find I can make sense of the numbers a little easier with all of the thumbnail previews. So I'm going to open this timeline, uh, stretch my paper out, and this new version of Clip Studio has much better contextual menus. So I'm going to just uh, select my clip, right click, and say copy. And here we'll just paste and paste one more time. And now we have a three clip loop sequence. All right, all right. The first thing that I want to call out is that the animation folders in the timeline now have this little plus button that give us access to any other properties that properties that we've set for this animation folder. For example, we have a new track label where we can go ahead and select a frame right click on the track label slot and just add any kind of animation notes that would be helpful to our production. We can scoot these around and if you click on it again and just delete the text they'll be removed from that uh, from that track. Alright so to add a tween to the middle clip we want to select it and now all we have to do is enable keyframes with this little button enable keyframes on this layer and what that does is it adds a whole transform section with various attribute slots, position, scale, ratio, rotate, and rotation center. The other thing that happens is that our animation folder turns into an object versus frames. And we can see that now our drawing cells are locked, which means we can't draw on them uh, in this mode. I'm gonna hit my pencil tool and uh, pencil tool and go ahead and try to draw and um, it doesn't let us do that. And that's because when we're in keyframe mode we're treating the whole animation folder like an object. So the only thing we can do now is to grab our object selector tool and manipulate the whole animation folder. If we want to go ahead and edit keyframes again, we can just select this edit keyframe button and this will allow us to now go into each individual drawing and make some marks. To manipulate the whole animation folder again as a whole, we'll just undo that and these become locked again and now we go back to our object selection tool. All right, so now all we have to do is uh, grab our animation sequence and just move it. As soon as we make a move, any relevant properties are automatically keyframed if none of them are selected. So if we only want to do position, I'll just undo this. Then we just select position and then go ahead and move our animation folder and a keyframe is selected there. So let's go ahead and find just the right spot for this jump. And I think I'm gonna start it right here at two and then we'll end it at four, right when he hits the ground again. So I'll go position and I'll set a keyframe there just by setting that button. And we'll set another one here because this is where he's gonna land. And right here, we'll just raise him up and let's see what that looks like. Good, so we got a little jump there. And I think the other thing I'm gonna do is rotate him backwards just a little bit. So we'll just do that. And of course, probably before that, I wanna set my rotation. One there, one there. And right when he's at his highest, we'll set him backward. All right, so we got a little jump there. I think I wanna extend these frames a little bit as well. So. We'll just do this, pull these down, one, so three and three A both get a little more screen time. We'll pull these back and let's just see what that looks like. Oops. All right, a little bigger. Now let's go ahead and enable the graph editor so we can see how these keyframes are interpolating. We can grab our uh, magnifying glass tool and zoom in and out here and we want to look at the position and the rotation so there's our our curves there and we want to make sure that our X and our Y curves are all being shown at once 
the V is other, so these will show anything that has to do with any values that don't have X and Y values, uh, for example, rotation and opacity. So the X and Y mostly refer to the position attributes there. So, um, all right, so I'll, I'll disable the magnifying glass there, so now I can grab my selections, I'll grab those and turn those into smooth interpolation, and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a little better. And maybe I'll just do a little bit less rotation on that. And we'll do something like that. All right. Yeah, simple little jump. There we go. Now, I didn't quite make the drawn frames to account for, you know, a jump landing, but but this does the trick to show the value of motion tweening. Okay, one thing I want to show you here is that after something is tweened and we want to make further changes to a drawing and we click the pencil icon, this temporarily removes any adjustments made by the keyframes so that we can go back and make drawing adjustments based on our original sequence, taking advantage of any animation curves and rhythm of action before we made the tweens. All right, let's add some compelling audio and make him run across the screen. Adding audio now is super easy. We'll go up to File, Import Audio, and we want to import an MP3. Now, if you need to do any conversion from WAV files or otherwise, there's lots of free online converters. I use this one at onlineaudioconverter.com. You just open your files, convert it, and download. Super easy. So I'll just bring this in. And let's see what it sounds like. Every object is a possible booby trap. All right, that'll give him something to run to. Now what we could do is scale him down and reset all of our keyframes so that he's uh, running from left to right. So in that case, we would have to come here, come to this clip, you know, scale him down, bring him over here, advance, you know, move him to the point where he'd wanted to jump. Then we'd have to scale this one down as well. It'd be a lot of moving around in the way we've set this up right now with the multiple clips. So let's go ahead and uh, just kind of reset our animation if we knew we wanted to run across the screen from the get-go. I'm going to right click and say delete all keyframes and that just deletes all keyframes from all clips on that timeline. I'll delete this one as well and this third one. We'll stretch out our animation folder and all I'm going to do now is um, now highlight these keyframes, right click, say copy and I can easily go ahead and just paste this exact same sequence. And if I wanted to, I can grab all of these together, copy, and we'll just paste that whole thing. And now we're back to where we started with... Every object is a possible booby trap. All right. Let's go ahead and introduce the 2D camera feature. We'll add a 2D camera by going to Animation, New Camera Folder. And the way the 2D camera works is it has its own transformation tracks by default and it will act on anything that's inside of this folder. So we see there's a new folder here called camera one, and we'll just go ahead and drag this animation folder inside of the camera uh, folder. And now whatever modifications we make to the camera will apply to any animation sequences inside of it. So now all we need to do is select our camera, make sure we're on our object selection tool, and go ahead and make modifications to our sequence. Now it may appear that nothing is happening, and that's because the view that we're seeing is showing us the camera field view. Uh, to make that a little bit clearer, if I move forward in the frame a little bit and we go ahead and increase the camera field view here, this acts more like what we might see on a storyboard, right? Where this describes the camera going from small to large. If we go ahead and, and change our display mode to show camera's field of view, then we get as if every object is a so you can kind of set your camera both ways. You can start only showing the field guides, or you can show you can start by showing the camera's field of view. Let's do it the other way, because sometimes I find that a little more intuitive. I'll grab that. By the way, this is the delete keyframe button. We can delete that keyframe as well. And if we just go ahead and start with showing what's in the camera's field of view, then this behaves more like we're just scaling our animation 
even though we're actually changing uh, you know where the camera is in relation to our, our 2D scene here. So I'll go ahead and uh, fit to screen and we'll just do something like that. So in essence uh, we've kind of scooted our camera back Every and we're just playing the uh, that animation sequence in relation to that camera. I'm going to go ahead and select our volume and just lower that just a little bit. Every object is a possible. And you'll note that the volume also has its own keyframe, so you can keyframe that. Every object is a possible booby trap. All right, we'll leave it something like that. And now all we have to do is uh, take our animation stack and move this across the screen. So we'll go here to our position. And let's just go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. And I want to make sure also that. Uh, let's say he's, um, yeah, we'll just make him run right across the bottom of that frame. That's fine. All right, so we'll say position here, select that new clip, and we'll set a keyframe there. And let's just go ahead and run all the way to the end. It'll be something like that. And scoot him over and make him run off screen. Every object is a possible right, movie trap. There it goes, running yep. across the screen. And uh, let's just see what our curves look like here and make sure they're set to linear, and they are. Um, depending on how you have set this uh, linear or smooth at the get-go, uh, that's how new keyframes will be created. But you can always just go ahead and drag these again if they were smooth and set this to linear, which they are right now. So he's running straight across. Every object is a possible booby trap. All right. Let's go ahead and make him uh, jump on booby trap because... That is what you're supposed to do with booby traps. All right, so I think the best, well, we already determined the best place for him to jump was uh, was on two here. And we'll just go ahead and scoot that audio back or maybe just scoot this forward so that when he says booby trap, he'll jump. And we can just keep adjusting that as well. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in here again and we'll do the same thing we did uh, with our previous little jump. But now at least I have you know, some uh, some distance information to work with. So I'm going to take all of these. Actually, I'm going to take, we already determined that uh, I wanted to give 3 and 3a a little bit more space. So I'll just do that like this. All right. So we'll say 2. We'll set a keyframe there. And then he's going to land on 4. We'll set a keyframe there. It's going to pop up on 3. And we said he was going to rotate a little bit as well. So we'll rotate that. Set a keyframe there. Rotating backwards. And I think I'm going to um, adjust where exactly the center of his rotation is. And let's just go ahead and put it uh, right where his shoulders are. Again, it set a keyframe on rotation center, which I don't necessarily want that there. But at least uh, we know we can keyframe that. All right, I'm just gonna turn off the audio for now. We can do that just by uh, clicking the I key. All right, so because I changed the center of the uh, animation frame, uh, the position uh, was off as well. So I'm just gonna go back to this uh, original keyframe and take note of what my Y position is, and that's 317.7. So I'll just come back to these and set that to 317.7. Do the same thing here. And do the same thing here. Extend our camera so that we can uh, keep seeing what's happening inside the animation folder, or paper as well. All right, 317.7, put that in there. All right, I think that works okay. Uh, particularly because I didn't make any new drawings for the jump or the landing. I think uh, maybe having that jump a little bit lower makes a little more sense for the drawings that are already in that sequence. All right, let's turn on our audio and see what that sounds like. Every object is a possible booby trap. All right, let's move this a little bit more forward so that he'll just come to the frame on, 
on that. Every object is a possible booby trap. Every object is a possible booby trap. All right, now clearly all we need to do is make a booby trap. So let's start that in another file. We'll make sure we're on animation. I'll just stay with my same, same low res, 15 frames per second, and we'll just make this a shorter time span here. And uh, let's draw out some frames. All right, and here uh, we're just going to use the keyframes again. This will be another good example of um, why motion tweening can be a real time saver because I just want to use the same shape uh, over and over to make this thing bounce on the floor. So instead of having to duplicate this frame and move it uh, frame by frame, or yeah, redraw it frame by frame on separate cells, we'll just motion tween it. So we'll go ahead and add our keyframing abilities, <clears throat> come in here, and Immediately, I just want to go ahead and set the um, rotation to the center of this, like that, and that we will just rotate from the center. All right, and I don't need all of these keyframes. Uh, we're not going to use scale, so we'll just select that, delete that, and we're not going to adjust the center of that. All right. All right, now we have to do is copy and paste this into our other animation file. <clears throat> Come through here and hit paste. Now, I just wanna show you something real quick. If I'm down here on the paper and hit paste, it's gonna come in full frame. And that's because it's not inside the camera transformation node. So as soon as we bring this into the camera transform transformation node, um, we can see that um, it's now respecting you know, where the camera was placed. We do have one problem though now. If we try to move this over to the location where we want it to appear in our scene, you can see that another position keyframe has been created. And now when we try to play, it's attempting to tween between the new position and the previous keyframe positions that we already set. So how can we reposition this in the scene and still retain all the benefit of the uh, nested tween animation that we had in our, in our little booby trap. Well, that's easy. We just create another camera, 2D camera node. So let's not use um, this camera for our booby trap. Let's pull this out and we'll make a new 2D camera folder and put this one inside our new one. And now we have a completely different camera uh, that we can use to frame our booby trap. So let's grab this and we'll just do the same thing that we did with our little Marley. And now um, this camera is completely independent from any keyframes that are happening inside uh, our secondary animation. So I'm just gonna move this up. I know I'm making a bunch of keyframes here, but uh, just have to kind of set it in the right spot first and then make it the right size. <clears throat> we'll do something like that. We can get rid of these. Good, and now we just need to make it play right when he jumps which is right around there. So we want our booby trap to uh, be already visible on screen when we have the jump. So let's give ourselves just a little more space here. Our jump is about right there. We'll extend this as well. And we'll just move all of this information down Maybe something like that. A booby trap. Oh, a little bit later. Booby trap. Every object is a possible booby trap. Every object is a possible booby trap. Okay, there you go. Those are the basics of motion tweening, how to use the new 2D camera, and made it even sweeter with 
the new ability to work with audio on the timeline. If you want to know more about Clip Studio's basic animation workflow, be sure to check out my Animation Basics Part 1 lesson for free here on YouTube. It's from an earlier version of Clip Studio that did not include audio or motion tweening, but everything else about the foundation workflow is the same. There are a few menu commands that have changed location or name, but I'll call those out on the video so you can still find your way around. And don't forget that the power of Clip Studio Paint is that the iOS app is a one-to-one -one build. Animating on your iPad is huge because it makes it accessible and flexible for any workflow. All right, hope this was helpful and happy animating.